So I was going to do an opening bit, but instead I'm just here to let you guys know that this week's video was voted on by our followers on Twitter. And if you head over to my Twitter right now, there's a poll that will last 24 hours that will determine the next fan voted video. The theme of this poll is villains. Are we doing Dio Brando from JoJo's Part 1 and 3, Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls, Joe Exotic the Tiger King, or Scar from The Lion King? You have 24 hours after this video goes live to vote. Otherwise, if you have suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll check some out. Remember to suggest stuff that I can quickly get through. Convention season is coming up and I can only work so fast and I want to leave you guys with at least a video a week while I'm busy in June. By the way, here's my convention schedule if you happen to be nearby. Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to the video where we take a look at pop culture characters and determine what alignment they are in Dungeons and Dragons. Now, before we begin, I have to stipulate as much as I possibly can. You need to watch my Shrek video before you watch this one. Now that sounds like a joke, but I'm absolutely serious. In that video, I lay out specifically how we look at alignment in this series. John Wick is one of the most requested characters I've ever been asked to look at, and I see him in the comments all the time, and after watching these movies, I now understand why. Context is absolutely everything when it comes to looking at John Wick. You need context when looking at his actions. You need context when determining the person judging his actions, as in me. And you just straight up need all the context before judging his actions as a whole, if you want to determine what D&D alignment John Wick might be. If you ask five different DMs what they think it is, you'll likely get three to five different answers, and that's just because we all have different perceptions on how we want to justify his actions and how moral they might be. Like I mentioned in my Shrek video, I lay out about as consistent as I can when I make these rules, but even I sometimes deviate from them. John Wick was a former hitman from the Tarasov mob, which is a small faction of a much larger organization of assassins and other underworld crime bosses. Usually an assassin for hire that follows a contract would result in an immediate lawful evil alignment, and that would be appropriate to label John as, but for several years before the events of the movie, John left the mob in order to get married. It's extremely heavily implied that she mellowed him out and through her influence turned him into a decent person. I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt and label John's alignment at the beginning of the movie as lawful neutral. However, just to satisfy my doubters, I will lean him heavily towards evil. I don't believe that this will have a huge effect on him, but I believe it is a good compromise. And again, before we begin, I must reiterate that my alignment decisions are all based on the rules that I follow as a DM and and my own personal biases. I will try to be leaning towards respecting the rules of their universe as well. In the John Wick movies, almost every faction of assassins answers to an organization called The Table, who sets the laws and decrees for all the underworld to follow. Honor and rules are a huge part of their organization, and there are many instances where characters are amoral or their actions don't quite neatly sit into good or evil because many of their actions are driven by their own goals, morals, and even emotions. Many of John Wick's actions in this video will be labeled on the neutral alignment spectrum, and I'm saying that ahead of time because most of his actions are based toward a very specific goal in each of the films. In the first movie, he is out to kill the man that killed his dog. Yes, really. And it's funny because even the characters in the movie call him out on this. Just a fucking car, just a fucking dog. But to John, it's not about the fact that it's just a dog. It's about what the dog represents. Honestly, the movie is brilliant in that regard. The dog was a symbol of his grief and his path to moving on. It was also the very last gift his wife could ever give him, and Theon Greyjoy just broke into his house and killed it. Also, as a side note, there are a ton of characters in these movies whose name I never bothered to learn simply because they don't last that long and they're just kinda plot devices. This guy, he's a sniveling, murderous, cowardly brat. His name doesn't matter. He's the motivator for John's actions. So yeah, if you get to the ding portion of the video and get confused, th that's what I did. Now in the second movie, John needs to kill a member of the High Table as a part of a blood oath he swore a long time ago, and the third movie is just a consequence of that action. Otherwise, John is always doing what he does to accomplish his goals, and the body count that he piles up are just consequences of the actions he needs to do to fulfill it. If he could, John would likely go in, kill his target, and leave without hurting anyone else. Which is why why I consider many of his actions to be neutral. And with all that context out of the way, let's go. 
I'm sorry I can't be there for you. But you still need something, someone to love. John honors his wife's wishes to take care of the puppy. Neutral good. <laughs> John taunts Theon Greyjoy instead of just ignoring him. Arguably neutral, but I'm going to go with chaotic neutral. John Joy rides with his dog in order to blow off steam. Chaotic neutral. John lets his puppy sleep with him in the bed instead of on the floor. Right, on, you man. could say this is any of the good alignments. Personally, I'd argue chaotic good, since you really shouldn't let your dog sleep on your bed with you. But we will go with neutral good. One of the reasons I always include the this is subjective line at the beginning of this analysis is because we each interpret these events in a different way. Depending on how you look at this, this could be anything. Some will say giving the dog a proper burial is paying respects and is lawful good. I'm choosing to interpret this as John coping and mourning the loss of his last connection to his wife. So with that, I'm going to say neutral. So what are you going to do? I need a ride. John asks his old associate if he saw his car. After a truthful discussion, John simply buys a new car and leaves without a word. Lawful neutral. John gets his old gear that he once buried at the bottom of his home in preparation for his revenge. He's only after Theon and doesn't seem to have any interest in anyone else, but understands that he is going in for a huge fight. Once again, this is subjective, but I think lawful neutral is the most appropriate based on what John wants to do. John hangs up on the mob boss, unwilling to negotiate. Chaotic neutral. John defends his home from intruders with deadly precision. Neutral. You, uh, working again? No, I'm just sorting some stuff out. I mean, technically, John didn't lie about what was going on. It's the officer that didn't follow up on it. And honestly, based on what state he's in, I'm pretty sure he's even legally allowed to defend his home like this. I'm not allowed to stand up for myself! I thought this was America! So, lawful neutral. No business can be conducted on these premises lest incurring heavy penalties. It's personal. John honors the rules of the Continental and tells his contact about the personal troubles. He is rewarded by honoring their rules with a hint of where to go. Lawful neutral. Hello, Francis. Mr. Vig. Are you here on business, sir? Afraid so, Francis. Why don't you take the night off? John tells his buddy to go home in order to spare him from the rampage. Neutral good. <laughs> Gonna sound like a broken record here, but this is super subjective. This man was directly involved with the killing of John's dog and stealing his car. Was it his idea and did he give out the order? No. Did he deserve to die specifically? Well, he's a mobster, so probably. John killed this man as both an act of vengeance and to keep him from talking and alerting everyone else. I'm going to say neutral given the circumstances, but if you argued neutral evil because he was a pawn of Theon, I wouldn't argue with you. So right then and there, John could have killed Theon, but he chose not to in order to kill the henchman as if to let him know, you fucked up, you're next. So badass though, chaotic neutral. Hey Harry, you keen on earning a coin, babysitting a sleeping one? John offers Harry a coin if he babysits the assassin that just came after him. John spares her despite the fact that she tried to kill him a while ago and he wants to follow the hotel's rules, lawful good. John burns all the money from the mobsters in order to get them out in the open. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. Arguably chaotic neutral since he said he enjoyed doing it, but I'm just going to say neutral since the action was a tactic and less for the lulls. When Ellen died, I lost everything. 
until that dog arrived on my doorstep. John explains to the mobsters why the dog was so special to him, and how if he gets revenge on his son, he will stop his rampage. Lawful neutral. I have your word then, if I tell you where he is, you let me walk away. Pull the contract. Done. Honors his agreement to let Papa Mobster live if he tells him where his son is. Sounds lawful neutral to me. True to his word, John kills Theon and then leaves. Arguably lawful evil, but I'm going to go with lawful neutral due to his justifications. Remember how I said this was subjective? Once again, this one is really hard to judge. So Green Goblin betrayed his contract to the mobsters to protect John, so he did a chaotic good thing. But now that he was killed by the mobsters because if Green Goblin killed John like he was supposed to, then Theon would still be alive. Arguably, the mobsters are in the right here because he betrayed them and cost them heavily in lives. And now John is turning around to revenge kill them. I can see why you guys wanted me to make this video so bad now. I'm honestly perplexed. To me, this is either a neutral or chaotic good act. And personally, I judge avenging a person as a good thing rather than a symbol of grief like a dog. So for this, I am going to say chaotic good. No more bullets. John honors Papa Mobster's terms and fights his stunt double Mono Mono. Also, this is a really underwhelming scene. You have a whole movie filled with what are basically Nat 20 fight scenes, and then you end it on a fist fight that's less impressive than Logan Paul's high school wrestling videos? Movie. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. John breaks into a vet clinic, tends his wounds, and then steals a dog. Chaotic neutral. Mir. John makes peace with the brother of Papa Mobster from the first movie, Lawful Neutral. John stores his equipment back underground, wanting to once again retire, Neutral. I can't help you. John rejects the request from Santino, a person he swore a blood oath to. By his organization, this is absolutely taboo, Chaotic Neutral. Against his better judgment, and against his wishes, John accepts Santino's contract to kill his sister so that he may take a seat at the high table of their organization, Lawful Evil. This is Gianna, the sister of Santino and is John's mark. She has chosen to slit her own rifts rather than being killed by John wanting to die her own way. John accepts this, comforts her, and then delivers what I believe is a killing blow, fulfilling both his contract and letting her die by her terms. Technically lawful good. John. John is caught by another assassin, leaving the scene of the crime. John admits to killing Gianna, which leads him to being hunted down by her entourage. Lawful neutral. Gentlemen. John then is led back to the neutral ground where he confesses to why he did what he did, and he explains that Santino sent him out to kill Gianna. Not that it helped him. Lawful neutral. Okay, so this has nothing to do with alignment, but when this scene played and all the assassins were getting text messages to kill John Wick, I actually got a text message on my phone. Scared the crap out of me. Nothing that has to do with this review, but it was a fun coincidence. John defends himself against assassins. Neutral. John stabs Cassian in the chest, but leaves him a way to live. I'd argue lawful good. We met and you gave me a gift. The gift that would make me a king. John meets up with a guy Wikipedia calls the Bowery King, but I'm gonna call him Morpheus because I'm not sure I've ever heard that name once during my entire two watch throughs of John Wick 2. Either way, through some weird politics, John convinces Morpheus to not kill him in exchange for taking out Santino, saying something about Santino will probably overthrow him in this part of the city. Either way, this is a basic lawful neutral. 
John, in an attempt to kill Santino again, has to kill a bunch of bad guys. Like, a comical amount of bad guys. Neutral. Jonathan, just walk away. Yeah, Jonathan. Walk away. John kills Santino in the Continental, a place where he absolutely is not allowed to conduct any business. This sets off a chain of events that affects everyone in the next story, but for now, in this circumstance, chaotic neutral. Mere minutes after John was labeled as excommunicado, he attempts to get some of his bug out material. He tries to take a taxi, but once he realizes he won't get to the library in time, he bribes the assassin taxi with his last gold coin to take his dog to the Continental to be taken care of. Neutral good. I still have time. He's almost up. Who's gonna know the difference? You sure this is what you want to do? John spends a huge portion of this movie defending himself against assassins, which are more common in this world than frickin' weebs at this point. Hit and miss on the fight scenes, but my favorite is the one against the Asian assassins in the antique store, where they just start throwing knives. I still have five minutes. Please. John, after taking an injury from the giant assassin, asks the doctor from the first movie for medical assistance since he has a few minutes left before he is excommunicado. Once John is labeled as such, he then takes over his own treatment. But then he gives the doctor two non-fatal injuries in order to save him from being killed by the high seat agents. I'd argue, lawful good. Why have you come home? Earlier in the movie, John grabs some bug out material he stored in the library, including his rosary that gives him a favor from this Russian faction of assassins. He uses this favor in order to secure passage out of the country to another person that can give him help. You could argue this is evil since he knows they will suffer consequences for this and is inherently selfish, but I'm saying it's lawful neutral since it isn't malicious. I just need you to get me to him. To who? Your old boss. Same thing as before, John kind of leverages a blood oath for his own sake on a person from his own past even though it will get her in trouble. Arguably lawful evil, but I'm going to say lawful neutral. I love it, bro. This dog. I will keep it. Excuse me? Sophie takes John to see one of their old mentors so that he can get directions on how to get to the one who sits above the table. After negotiations, their mentor demands that Sophie give him one of their dogs in compensation for the information. She refuses, which results in him shooting the dog. Sophie goes ballistic and starts a gunfight against John's better judgment. Neutral. Tell me, Jonathan, why do you wish to live? My wife, Helen. To remember her. After meeting the man who sits above the table, who by the way gives me huge Assassin's Creed vibes and I absolutely love it, John strikes a deal with him to absolve him of his excommunicado and the open bounty on him if he agrees to kill his friend at the Continental. He seals the deal with his very Assassin's Creed sacrifice. Lawful evil. Be with you? He was. John preemptively strikes out against the elite assassins from earlier in the movie. Neutral. You shoot me, you sell your soul. But I'll be alive, and I can remember her. Until you die as a servant of the high table. John refuses to kill his friend and chooses to die as a free man, protecting both his friend and himself. Chaotic good. <laughs> John decides to spare the two assassins that he kind of formed a rapport with earlier. Chaotic good. Uh, you look as bad as I feel. <laughs> so it's looking like John is going all rampage mode against the high table, since in the next movie he'll be teaming up with Morpheus. Since they will be betraying their society, it's looking like this is going to be chaotic neutral. You pissed John. <gasps> Are you? Yeah. Hooey! These are some intense movies, and I can see why you guys wanted me to review this character so badly. He is certainly really, really interesting, and I doubted myself pretty much the entire time while writing the script 
but I think I justified my decisions as much as I could while showing my reasoning. Now, if you disagree with my assessment, I totally understand. It really comes down to what you value in terms of human life. If you think John is evil because in your mind killing someone over a dog is inexcusable, that's fine, I get it. In my mind, his actions to avenge his dog are extreme, but at least understandable. Most people understand how painful it is when you are denied the benefit of grief, but to have that grief taken away from you in such a cruel way, along with the extra layer that it was the last gift from your deceased partner, is bound to cause some people trauma. And to top it all off, it's a puppy, the most defenseless thing on the planet. Don't be mean to dogs, people. Remember to vote on the next character on my Twitter and to check out the rest of the alignment videos or our Pokemon D&D campaign on The Loading 2. I'll see you next time.